All right, so we're sitting here with uh, Anders Karlsar, mm -hmm. Managing Director of Symbio Sweden. Uh, welcome, Anders. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for coming. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, what is it that you do, uh, more specifically? If you mean here in Symbio, uh, <clears throat> I'm managing the Swedish operations, more or less. So Symbio is divided into uh, four different countries. US, China, Finland, Sweden, and I, I run the Swedish part, and uh, Symbio is run very kind of stovepipe-like, so every country is their own region, so we run, manage our own business ourselves, more or less, very few common functions that we share, so I'm uh, more or less doing a little bit of everything here. Mm. And Symbio, Sweden is very small compared to the other countries, so we uh, do a lot ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Do you have any interest on the side? Or? Yeah. yeah, of course, uh, I'm a husband and father of two children and <laughs> takes some time, which is I'm very happy of, of course, and I'm also very interested in being out in the nature and doing sports and activities. So mountain biking takes most of the time, I think, in that space. Mm -hmm. so it takes a couple of hours yeah. to ride and a couple of hours to clean and make the bike work again afterwards. <laughs> Think so. Yeah. So, uh, going back in time a little bit, uh, could you tell me how you, uh, could you tell us how you started out with IT? Um, what was your first gig and uh, what was it like in the beginning uh, getting into IT and tech in general? You know, I, I'm, uh, I haven't, haven't any uh, kind of engineering education, so I'm actually a master of business in business administration. So. Mm -hmm. I started working in uh, Swedish banks, SCB, and uh, as a financial analyst and working with um, national, what's called, economics uh, yeah. and so on. And uh, <clears throat> we used uh, some software in that space to make analysis easier, of course. Mm -hmm. Use a lot of databases and uh, I, I got pretty fond of using those instead of pen and paper. So yeah. I ended up with, uh, after a couple of years, being uh, sort of recruited over to one of these vendors. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I came into IT. So at that when I was supposed to be involved in business development and product development and also sell sort of to my former colleagues in the financial markets. So that, that's how I came into IT. That was a long time ago, so early in the, in the, in the beginning of uh, Windows 95 or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so it was the platform. So uh, <clears throat> I think uh, I found it pretty easy to come to work in that space because there were so many other people that knew technology, so I didn't have to know it yeah. myself. I was more fond of finding the business reason why we should use technology to support the business and reach their goals and so on, how we could do that. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I worked for that company a while and then I was one of the founders of Business Objects in the Nordics together with some other people. And so that's a business intelligence tool. So then. Mm -hmm. I came into a more broader um, business, so to say, because yeah. business, business intelligence can be used by any industrial sector or any role, actually, in marketing or finance. So, uh, mm. so, and then after a couple of years, I was also recruited to Sun Microsystems, which is a totally different company from the software guys. So, I was first very nervous about how would I survive in a hardware company, yeah, yeah. And CPUs and memories and other things yeah. were very important and the architecture of such things. So, but um, also in that company, more than in any other, of course, maybe were a lot of techies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone could help very well. I was very fond of helping, mm -hmm. telling features and positive things about that. And, and uh, I went there just before the dot-com boom started so we had a really nice time in sun because that was kind of the state-of-the-art oh, platform okay. for all these boo.com and other yeah, <laughs> famous yeah. dot-com companies and uh, we had uh, then uh, part of the struggle because linux grew and so on and there were a lot of competitive market market in the market space but uh, then some some sort of converted into this open source world more or less bought MySQL and so on, and we had a second mm -hmm. chance there to be. And that's how I came, this is a long story, but how I came, became very, very interested in the entrepreneur space, because mm -hmm. then we started to work really with startups, and that's 
this was 2006, 2007, when this Twitter and Facebook and everyone grew yeah. like hell. Yeah. So. And I think that's the, the time when startup became something big here in Sweden as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, I have personally had a opportunity to meet the founders of Spotify, Stardog and so on, help them with, the, uh, gave them hardware for free mm -hmm. and software services mm -hmm. and open source stuff and MySQL and stuff and so on. And, and all of them were really happy. And, so it was really fun to work with them, and I'm really glad that some of them really made it as well. Yeah, yeah I'm like Spotify at least. Yeah. <laughs> so. Spotify obviously is the major platform for music distribution in Sweden and in Europe in general, and it's growing a lot in, in, in the States as well. Um, how was it meeting those guys in, what was it, 2006, 7? 2006, yeah. something they started, I think. We, yeah. we ran a program in Sim, Sun. Yeah. Where I was heading the Nordic part, that's a that's like a, like a hobby project yeah. besides the ordinary account management, sales management stuff. Where we try to meet as many of these as possible and have them to sign up in some in a kind of community that we supported. Mm. So it, I th thought it was really fascinating to see all these talents and meet them and see how engaged and passionate they were and and all these. Yeah, sometimes crazy ideas they had and I told my colleagues about this that they didn't understand yeah. anything. <laughs> Why would you use your computer to listen to music when yeah. you have these nice things at home <laughs> and so on. So, so that yeah, was really I fun. I many of us said that it was a fly that it wouldn't kill the, uh, the CDs. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, I think we had like 250 members in Sweden in yeah. this community at that time so not many survived but a few went really well in that from there yeah. cool yeah startup community in general is something <coughs> special it's it's about the atmosphere it's about the passion it's about everything mm. around it really you you meet so many inspiring people just hanging out in in those areas and and uh, at those events yeah uh it's really cool so, how do you see uh, the startup scene here in, in Stockholm? Like, obviously, a lot of people uh, abroad, uh, overseas in, in the States, are speaking about Stockholm mm -hmm. as a tech hub, up-and-coming tech hub for startups. Uh, they don't know too much about Stockholm, but, but they know about some of the companies, and they, they know that Stockholm is a major city when it comes to tech in Europe. Yeah. Uh, how, do you see any trends? Do you see where this train will sort of take us here in Stockholm? I think um, they're absolutely right. They have <clears throat> in Stockholm, as according to all the different uh, newspapers and others that made these lists, Stockholm mm. is always on the top five or something. Mm. And uh, uh, a lot of companies come from here, but uh, now Spotify and others, they're pretty old companies. So yeah. there hasn't been any huge successes lately. I think True Caller mm. is really coming up they have like 100 million users or something so well yeah that's, that's what they are grown really big but mm. um, so you don't know what, what where they would earn their money from but no, no. it's <laughs> up to some someone to decide later yeah, they're, <laughs> in they're building their community yeah. but but uh, i think the well stockholm has this rather tight community i think around the people here that is mm. involved in this kind of um entrepreneurship development and so on so the community itself will drive forward in that way so a lot of communication there and uh, of course people are well educated from schools here in Stockholm, Gothenburg and so on yeah. mm -hmm. it's easy for rather easy for people to come here from other countries to mm -hmm. add to that community mm -hmm. from in China, US, whatever mm -hmm. and also um, I mean I think it's rather hard to get uh, funding here, actually, because mm -hmm. there, there's, uh, from what I heard, I, so to get these initial funding, then if you grow and become very big, you can of, of course attract money. But to get these first couple of rounds, where you need this, mm -hmm. so, so I think it, there are a lot of people in this SUP forty six and other mm -hmm. innovation hubs here that that are struggling, or there are a couple of guys trying to figure out how to move forward. So I think that if the finance area would ease up, we could do even better. Yeah, and I think I read an article on the New York Times uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I think it was Fritz of Anderson, yeah. Um, yeah. who said something about the, the, the problem with the startup community in Stockholm is it 
we have a lot of problem with the housing shortage. Yeah. Um, and that's still a problem for you know, startups to grow and to actually open up in you know, Stockholm. Yeah, if you bring someone here from another country, it's really hard to find yeah. a place to live. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a problem indeed. Um, so, uh, Anders, um, what do you find? Is there something that you find painful with what you're doing at the moment? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I tried to prepare myself a bit here, but it's a rather difficult question or interesting yeah, questions it's... you have. But I think uh, I'm a person that um, I'm pr probably very Swedish, so mm. I, I like uh, kind of uh, trust and being yeah. a person that. Uh, my foundation is that givers get so if i give something i will respect mm -hmm. something back and exactly. so on and, and that kind of little bit diplomatic approach that sweets mm -hmm. have as, as well so i think i, I get a little bit uh, it's a bit, a bit painful if i get continued disappointments so to say i'm disappointed about something and it continues and so mm -hmm. i don't see any change or I, I trust someone and suddenly i have to distrust him or that kind of that i feel is a little bit mentally painful because it's kind of in the genes that you should yeah, I think it's have to be Swedish to actually uh, yeah. uh, you to don't... be loyal uh, mm. uh, so but, but, yeah. then, then of course um, personally also I have a problem with, with, with dealing with very pessimistic people optimistic myself <laughs> Someone who always complains or has some. Yeah, well, I think optimism isn't naive, it's actually leadership. So, yeah, so I think yeah. you can come on a long way with just mm. being optimistic. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, being a Swede, is there is there something that you can uh, grant advantage of the fact that you're a, a Swede when you're dealing with the clients abroad, for instance? Uh, I, I learned actually. Um, from my time in Symbio that Swedes and Chinese people are pretty similar to their in their mm -hmm. approach. Okay. So, I mean, maybe they have a different management style or something, and uh, we're more uh, this kind of everyone should be involved in decisions yeah. and so on in Sweden. But when it comes to how you approach people and how you act in a meeting like this or something, we're pretty close to each other. I think so. We can work very well together. Mm. At, at a certain level, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. Then, of course, if you need to understand how the management works, in, then maybe you need to have some training first. <laughs> <clears throat> also, with US people, or I don't know, I, I think we get along very well with them as well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I believe that Sweden is quite Americanized in a way. I mean, we've always, me personally, I have been working with a couple uh, US clients before so I was I kind of prepared for it a little bit before going to the States but still I think like you as in Sweden it seems like we've always had a nice collaboration between mm -hmm. those countries yeah. you know there's a lot of people flying back and forth there is non-stop flights to New York as well as LA now yeah, yeah. Uh, which which is pretty cool so yeah but um, even though we, we may have uh, already covered this, but is, is there something you love about your work or, or about anything? Yeah, I love um, to stay in the work area. I, I love this kind of work where you constantly learn things, mm -hmm. so you meet people, understand what they are doing, learn a lot, bring that to someone else and so on. I also love to work with uh, motivated people like you, for example, <laughs> that are doing this. <laughs> no one has told you to do it, but you yeah. do it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, right. so uh, and uh, because that gives me energy, and it also feels that we constantly move forward. Yeah, you're not standing on the same spot all the time. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I really love to look at new business opportunities mm. and learn things and so on. And then, and then, as I mentioned in the beginning, of course, I love also riding the mountain bikes yeah. in nice yeah, trails or being skiing in nice uh, sunny snow conditions and so yeah. on. <laughs> it's also nice. But... Could you see that you being a sportsman, uh, doing mountain biking, could you see that that in a way like helps you being a better professional? In, 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 in the stuff that you do, um, 
You mean like it finds motivation? In... Yeah, or like it, if it keeps your mind sharp or staying healthy, or if if you can seek some inspiration from that, or you know, something. I, th I think um, with the mountain biking, I really have really done that seriously. So I have very good uh, what's called condition. Yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So condition. Uh, condition, yeah. condition. So I notice myself that I can work longer and harder than anyone else mm -hmm. because I never get yeah. tired. Mm -hmm. So I can probably inhale more oxygen or something yeah. in the meeting room and take take a larger portion of that. Or Maybe something. we should stop. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so that's some, one thing, and then um, I think uh, if you do uh, sports like this, you're out in rain, muddy mm -hmm. stuff, uh, it's not fun all the time, so you, your motivation level is maybe a bit higher, yeah. so you're used to suffering <laughs> and yeah, you yeah. never give up, so to say, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know that there is, exactly. you need to push beyond, beyond this limit and then you're ahead of the team mm -hmm. or the gang. So. So the, the, such small things I mean, might help, of course. But so, so when you have tough, a tough day at work, uh, it's hard closing deals. It you know everything has just been dreadful throughout the day. Uh, are you thinking about that then? Oh, that day up in the mountain, it was dirty, it was cold. <laughs> I have it a lot better now. Let's push it till the end of the day and you know sort of perform better. Um, I'm not really thinking so in that way, no. way but I, I always see that, for example, we had to do make some tough decisions here in Symbio Sweden in the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. and the, uh, it's it's hard to do that, but you don't you cannot kind of look into that situation and feel that oh this is going down the drain. Mm -hmm. You need mm -hmm. to look you beyond that. Yeah, what, what's yeah. the effect of this? Mm -hmm. Of doing this, it's actually making things better for everyone else. So, mm -hmm. so it's, you know, that kind of approach, yeah. I think, you can develop. Yeah. So, so that you have a forward-looking mindset. Mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in a way. Anders, uh, what do you wish? Mm. For, for the future, for or uh, yeah, yeah is there like, something that you are wishing for? Yeah, I could answer like kids that there should be peace in the world or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I think it's actually uh, America, my, my personal uh, yeah. thing is that I think everyone should be able to use their full potential mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. way. It could be at work or somewhere else. But so so um, like you people are you call yourself cribs, but yeah. you're, you're not cribs in terms of using your potential. So, no, exactly. So you have other talents that you can really leverage and become. A real person, so to say. Mm. Yeah, this, this, that's what we say is that um, everyone is better at someone, better than someone at something. Yes, so, yeah. probably. So there's so, always some potential in everyone else. So that that's kind of a big, <laughs> big picture wish. Then of course I wish myself some things. Uh, for example, um, you would think that things would happen faster than it mm. does mm. so I want Symbio Sweden to move to grow again and yeah. we're struggling to do that because uh, we're small and we're growing slowly and so on but uh, so things like that you wish of course I also wish my kids a very happy future and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any role models? Uh, I don't know actually I don't think I have one or like these very specific persons, but mm. I, I think there, there are some people or companies or something that I'm really impressed of. Mm. Uh, kind of 2006, when I started with startup things, the Rich Branson was probably the yeah. role model, and he has grown a little bit too much rock star now, maybe yeah, yeah, to, be, to be a real role model <laughs> still, but he's really a fascinating person, of course. Mm -hmm. who started all these uh, companies that uh, changed business models in, in important industries, so things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think this guy Elon Musk, who is founded the Tesla company, is a really nice guy. He's seeing opportunities where people don't <laughs> normally <laughs> see them and, and has, of course, uh, he's wealthy enough to be able to also proceed mm -hmm. to the next step and make yeah. something out of it. But, he has made this Tesla 
uh, business something really f fantastic. I think that's a really amazing company. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's the people who dare to change the world. Who have yeah. To do it, so. But I have no clue how he is like a person in his family <laughs> life or something. But, <laughs> but uh, as, as a leader, so to say, he's definitely kind of a role model. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. But um, how do you define success? Um, for me, I think it's this learning and individual development that I get something out of. Uh, I, I feel already I get, got something from speaking to you here, but, uh, so uh, that, that's uh, success for me. So also I, I want to see happy people around me. So if we do something good together at Symbio and everything runs smoothly and, and you and the other guys here uh, well, find it uh, like now we, we've done something good, now we're happy. I think that's, that's a sign of success. Yeah. Uh, US guys normally measure that in dollars, but, <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's also nice, of course. But uh, I, I think like uh, knowledge is the differentiator you have that you know something or can maybe can do something else than other people. But also gaining knowledge is kind of what you can differentiate your company or yourself. And if you improve there, you are successful in my view. <laughs> mm -hmm. But do you actually take some time? during the years or month to actually measure your progress in life? Uh, no, not really, I think. No? I, I, um, I think a lot about what I do and if we are doing this right and, yeah. and so on. And, but I'm also very, I'm rather old, so I'm very experienced, so <laughs> I don't spend time on things that I, yeah. that I know will be for waste, so uh, I, I can uh, I mean, I've been in working for a U.S. company like Business Objects and mm. Sun and now Simu for mm. quite many years. So I know mm. that people in this industry can kind of can start doing things and be very uh, energetic around something and then it, some organization changes or something and then it fades out. Yeah. So learn to, not to spend too much time on, on things that I don't think is gaining us and, or me or us in a Swedish company. So. So, so that, that's uh, that's a way to filter out and then focus a yeah. lot on. And I think also focus is a suck. Then the guy who can focus, he can be successful because mm -hmm. that's kind of the way to to do things. You you don't do too many things at the same time or something. You do only two or three things and do that really good. So. Yeah. But to actually one last question that isn't on the agenda, mm -hmm. what is the final destination? For me? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah um, I've always wanted to work in a company run by Elon Musk or something, yeah. <laughs> that kind of company actually, to have some operative role there. Or okay. So maybe Tesla. In, in a company like Tesla or something, some, something that really changed the business models or something yeah. and that I really believe in. There are many startups that I don't believe in their idea. I don't mm. see really the global effect of what they are doing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If, if I would find such a role for someone who wanted me in that, <laughs> I would really say yes. So that would nice. be, I think, the, ne the next step for me being always on the kind of selling side of services or products to become be on the other side. Uh, like I started in the banking area, it was yeah. on the other side. <laughs> but it's cool to have experience of both, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that, yeah. I think I would have been less successful in sales if I didn't have these first years in where I was fo fully focused on the business, so to say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Analyzing companies, what, are dri what is driving this and this Swedish strange company that you never heard of before. <laughs> mm -hmm. and then uh, it made me made it easier to understand the client's requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's obviously uh, one thing. And I guess uh, a very important thing when you are a consultant as well, that you are not only very good at what you're doing, if it's programming in C sharp or mm -hmm. testing in Jade unit or, or whatever, uh, but you have like a business mindset, you might have a business background, 
uh, you understand your client, you understand the business, mm. you can help out uh, in different kind of business cases. I think that sort of makes you a stronger consultant in a way. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. You can pick up things that you can sort of correct them mm. and tell them that if you need this, you probably need this too. And then you become more of a trusted advisor mm. in the end to this client instead of just a vendor that mm. try to push things. Mm. If, obviously, uh, to wrap this up, uh, but I have one curious, curious question. Uh, if you got to, you know, picture a small uh, company, a startup company, or whatever, uh, what would you uh, think would be some key factors uh, for a successful company uh, when it comes to atmosphere in the company? When it comes to you know making your employees happy, uh, make making the company produce more. The, the perfect startup. You know? The perfect startup. Perfect startup. Yeah. yeah. Like three success tips for mm. startups. Mm. Uh, if they have a strong idea, they have some funds and so on, this mm. basic stuff yeah. in place. I think the, the leadership is very important that mm. the guy who is the CEO or whatever mm. his role and title is, is, he has the vision and mm. he stays with that vision and then he can pivot the sort of daily work a little bit but then mm. this uh, it's very clear and he can explain this very clearly that every day you make a little sm small step against that mm. mm. long-term vision and, and then then you have maybe uh, different roles there so that maybe one person can which has does those experiences and skill sets can focus on funding business development and so mm. on and someone mm. more CTO guy can focus on the, the development if it's a tech startup it, Mm. We can be very focused on, on the product, soft product development, and, and mm. build that team. And then, of course, they need to to build an atmosphere with the co combination of focus, progress, and having fun and kicking ass and so mm. on. So, mm. so the, I don't know how to do that, but that probably solves itself if you have the right people in the right chemistry there in the room. Mm. So. Yeah, but yeah, I, I completely agree with you, and uh, it's been great interviewing with you. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been really great to have a chat with you. Yeah, and hopefully we can do something else uh, in the future. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank Anish. you.